the best you can do for the world, for your colleagues, for your businesses is to be healthy, to be having your own fun, to give yourself space and time to think. But in order to do that, you can't work 15 hour days. You have to choose to work an eight hour day and know what's right for you. Because if you don't have the energy to give to others, then you'll just be taking again from the world. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 54 of Business Therapy. This is the show where Jonathan and I bring live professionals on to talk about their live business challenges. This week on the show, we have Shay Emery. Welcome to the show, Shay. Thanks for having me. It's exciting times. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, Shay's coming on the show to talk about his multiple business ventures and some of the challenges he's having. So I'm going to kick it over to you. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Some of the business stuff you've got going on and the challenge you want to talk about today. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm hailing from Whistler, British Columbia, here up in Canada, and uh, I have uh, spent the last eight years as an entrepreneur. Uh, after retiring from professional football up here in the Canadian Football League, uh, I think uh, it was mentioned that I was also I got a few accolades, and the thing that I was most proud about was uh, winning the nastiest player in the league. Uh, twice, uh, playing middle linebacker. It's a coveted uh, trophy. And uh, I was, you know, got to the point where, uh, you know, hitting people with my head for a living wasn't, uh, wasn't, wasn't going to last, uh, last a long time. So I had to figure out what I was going to do outside of sport. Uh, you know, I started getting into uh, men's health and well being, started doing public speaking. I uh, did my first TEDx talk in 2015 uh, down at uh, uh, Loyola Marymount in LA, uh, and uh, you know have been kind of you know trying to be in the 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 business realm uh, ever since. Um, and really, it was always about uh, getting people to get active in a in a sense to. Uh, take care of their own health and well-being, whether it be, you know, take action about what your recreation looks like, take action about what your, um, you know, your health and well-being practices are from your your daily routines, you know, just kind of have that initial catalytic conversation with whoever it was uh, to empower them to take that next step, whether it's, you know, to, to join the, the tennis club that I own and operate uh, or to, you know, book a, a retreat with uh, one of our service providers. Um, but yeah. So long story short, I am in recreation. Uh, I have multiple businesses. Uh, one's a mobile events company. Uh, I was also doing the public speaking circuit, doing probably two a month uh, pre-COVID, and uh, and then also have this sports and recreation center up here in Whistler, uh, which is basically a tennis facility that we've turned into a multi-purpose uh, sports and rec social club. Um, you know, the closest thing I would I would like to associate it with would be like a Soho house or kind of like a members based. Uh, you know, you can bring your guests. And guests are able to come, uh, but we have tennis, pickleball, roller skating, axe throwing, snowball fights. Uh, we have a whole lawn games arena. Uh, I'm in the process of buying an, like a life size catapult. Uh, so we're uh, we're in the, in the business of you know getting people outside their comfort zone, having fun, uh, but also creating a little bit of a risk factor there to you know get them to dive into those experiences. I kind of I feel like I have to do a lot of it and and that's really where this this uh this major issue comes in for me is, is how to how to you know hunker down within my own foundation you know my own my own things and then you know so, so that i can support the people that i work with my partners and my staff as well as the clients but let's hone in on the on like what the actual problem is what how is it how is it a problem? Like, are yeah. people saying they're not getting enough of your time? Are you not getting to things you want to get to? Like, what's the, like, why is this, any of this a problem? It all sounds wonderful. Yeah. But what, what you know, I'm, so what's wrong? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, well, I mean, you, you're doing, doing what you want to do. You're introducing people to things. You're being creative. Um, yeah. I, so that's a great question. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, the, the, the way that it, it, uh, it arrives for me, or sorry, arises for me is that, you know, in past, and it has been, uh, you know, a specific partner 
has been like, well, you said that you were going to, you know, focus on this arm of the business and you're doing something completely different. Right. Um, and then, you know, it's a time thing. We're like, oh, we, you know, we need more, you know, my kids, my, my, you know, that my family is like, Hey, like, you know, when we readjusted that, you know, my, my partner, she's staying at home at this point in time, uh, full time with the kids. And I'm, you know, I'm going after whatever I'm going after. And I'm just like seven days a week, nonstop to, to make it happen. Um, which isn't healthy. <laughs> right. And well, well, do you feel it's not, is it affecting your health or do you think it's not, you think you imagine that this can't be healthy? Uh, you know, I'm, I, I definitely cut from like a, like a blue collar cloth. Um, you know, I, I love working, uh, you know, coming from that background, like, you know, I'm fine with the grind. Uh, I think it's just that now it's like, you know, really trying to find because it's events based and it's sporadic. Uh, and, and, you know, there is a facility that is being managed in, in, in the middle of it all. So it's not just like, I'm not just, you know, uh, a remote worker and having, you know, to hit deadlines and, you know, go to events and execute events with my, it's like, we're also running a facility from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. every day. And I'm a big mm-hmm. part of that, right? And uh, and I want to be a big part of that because I love seeing the smiling faces, right? I love seeing the people enjoying it. Um, but I think it's, you know, the where I see it becoming an issue is that, uh, you know, when there is variables uh, and, and there is obviously inevitably variables every single day, uh, you know, the, if I'm constantly – you know, working 12 to 15 hour days, uh, you know, that's where it becomes, you know, if I'm not managing my time and I'm not managing my schedule and my, my to-do list and my tasks, then that's where it can like really quickly spiral out of control. And it has in multiple times, uh, you know, throughout the last year of kind of being open again, right? Because we're, we're in events, we're in group gatherings, no, this is not Florida, Jonathan. Right? So this is. It was. Uh, it was uh, the Florida never closed. Yeah, I know. Man, I just need to go like open up a snowball fight arena in Florida. Let's do it, baby. But uh, you know, I I love the question because for me it really brings up the inability for me to hone in on that routine daily because I'm like always moving. It's always something. Okay, we got an event at eight a.m. We have an event for, at nine p.m. Oh, still two. It's just like, so it's always constantly shifting. And my routine is always needing to be readjusted. Uh, and then it just falls apart. In, in you know, is it a problem not having a routine? Like what I'm trying to get at is like, it, like what, what's breaking or what, um, what do you wish was different? Not what do you think or what traditionally do people expect should be different, but for you personally, what would you like to have different that that you're not able to make happen? Well, I'd love to make a lot more money, Jonathan. That'd be great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Fair. Well, that's good. I mean, that's like we're, I'm trying to get to something that's like uh, measurable and actionable that you know we can glom onto because the idea of having a schedule, a routine, it's a means to an end. It's not an end. Yeah. You know. So, as an example, or the idea of fulfilling commitments. It depends. Is it commitments you want to fill? Mm-hmm. You know, are you being realistic with what you want to do? Or are you are other people telling you what your commitment should be? So like yeah. what I'm trying to get at is like what's the end that uh you want, not what seems to be what people do. Yeah, I mean for me, my you know, my th- thought on that is really I've really gotten a lot better over the last year at managing my boundaries. And, uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, the question or the point around other people's expectations of me or, you know, what they think I should be doing. Um, and, you know, I think really at this point it's about, you know, okay, I've been in this current status for about three years since taking over this business. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a utility utility tool for the, the brick and mortar experience. 
you know, I know how to fix all the things, do all the things, facilitate the events, host the parties, you know, do the liquor license, like all the, you know, all of the, I can tinker with pretty much everything in the business model. Um, and so that makes me feel like I need to do those things regularly. And if I'm not there, then I feel bad about it. And, you know, I think uh, where, where I, could, we, could we pause there for just one second? Yeah. Feeling bad about it, like, uh, because you feel like you should do it is different than whether or not that's going to help you meet any goal or be good for anyone else. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to reflect on, on how you're uh, expressing it. Because if let's say the goal is to make as much money as possible, then you look at the numbers, you know, and you see where, where would my time make the most money, you know, or even where can I make other people do things, you know, to, to make the most money. But the way you're expressing it again, it's, 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 um, it seems to be outside of you. That's, you know, that there's some force uh, having you go in a certain direction, but you're not expressing like what it is that you want to be doing. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I'm a pleaser, right? I've, I've always, I've always been that way. Like I'm, I'm very much an empath and, and, uh, you know, staffing is a huge issue. So, you know, we're dealing with, you know, young, young minded individuals. I'll just say that, um, who are a bit sensitive and I'm quite frank sometimes, uh, not angry or mean, but like, I just want, mm -hmm. I just want it done. <laughs> like, um, but, uh, so like I'm, I'm, you know, constantly trying to, you know, uh, white glove a lot of the people and emotions when really like, I know that I want to spend my time selling and creating and executing, but I'm having to shovel snow because we, we lost our maintenance guy or, X, Y, and Z. Um, and you know, I, I don't mind doing it like temporarily, but like, it's not a good use of my time. Right. It definitely does not generate any revenue positively. Uh, and I, I'm also at the point where I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to be the owner that is too good to fucking shovel snow. Can I swear on this? I don't know. There goes. I, yeah, <laughs> thanks. So. I don't know. Kids show. <laughs> uh, Mike, is this a. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, like I'm cognizant of that. I want to play my role, right? I don't want to be like, well, I'm not shoveling snow. I'm not doing that. Like, you know, I'm too busy. I'm too busy for that or what? Like, that ain't me. That's not my personality. Um, and, you know, I think it's, again, you know, what's coming up for me is like just really being super crystal clear on, on the expectations of my, of the people around me so that I can just go and not feel like you were saying, you know, emote, uh, so much about whatever's happening on, on a daily basis, trust that it's being done by the, by the person in that role or what have you. Um, and I think there's like, you know, being someone that has had major trust issues in in relationship in in partnerships in business what have you uh you know especially now with uh the staffing issues and people just being like peace out like i'm like wait like what like we just gave you the general manager position and now you're quitting on the first day of the summer like after we just spent five grand on a new smoker and this that like, and a whole menu based around you and, uh, and so I, I look at all these different issues and I'm like, I can't, I can't have those on my heart on a daily basis. I got to move through it. And, and, uh, I, I don't want to sound like an asshole or, or anything, but like at this point, I've been doing this for, you know, roughly 10 years. Uh, my mindset is that when someone quits or moves on to greener pastures, which I love for them to do in an organized fashion. I want to empower them to grow and move into their, you know, you know, from the 20 to 25 year old range. Uh, I'd love to, you know, mold and, and help them grow and then, you know, send them off to their actual life, right? Like we're throwing snowballs and axes over here, right? Like, what are you doing? Right. You, do you want to coach axe throwing your whole life? Maybe, maybe not, but, uh, is, uh, but they're not all worth, 
they're probably not all worth your time. Like, in other words, ment- you don't need to mentor everyone or send everyone happily on their way. No, no. So I, I'm, I'm going to cut to the chase and then I'm going to let Sam, I'm, you know, I'm, like yes. I'm, I'm dominating here a little bit. But, and I would really give this recommendation. I, I, would, uh, and I would suggest living louder, living out loud far more sure. and amp up what you think is being an asshole. I would, I would likely uh, amp that up on some level because that's more you, not you're a jerk or whatever, but when you think you're being like, I don't want to be the guy who doesn't do X, that's trying to be something. But in the moment, it's either appropriate or it's not. Mm-hmm. Like that's being a shot, that's being uh, a, an imposter of you. You is what you think you should be doing right in that moment. And that's a far better les- lesson to teach people. Because in right, right in a particular moment, you're building experiences, you're building all these other things. There might come a time when you need to do some other job at the same time. But right now, there's a lot of other things to be doing, and other people need to do their jobs. Mm-hmm. So I would not get too caught up on what you think you should be and get focused a lot more on what you want to be right now in any given moment. Wow. You know, yeah. Like I've done a lot of, uh, you know, retreats and, you know, personal development stuff and therapy and, you know, personal therapy and therapy with the like, mother of my kids. And, um, you know, the, the thing that consistently, the theme that consistently would come up, Jonathan and Sam, is that I was af- afraid of failure, one, and two, uh, most poignantly is, uh, I was afraid of, of success and, you know, what comes with that, you know, being big and loud, like I'm 245, 250 right now. And I, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine who is a three-time Olympian javelin thrower for Canada. She's like stunningly beautiful and six foot three, just stacked. Right. And she, we were talking on Halloween about um, how we can like literally walk into an environment and, and like mold the energy in the room, like in an instant, positively, negatively up, down, like, like manipulate the whole situation in, in a way where we're like, we're just trying to fit in. Right. We're not like, I don't want to walk into the club or walk into an event and, and bring it down. Like I'm trying to bring it up here. Right. And I've always been hesitant to be loud in not on the football field or in the arena. And, uh, you know, that's really prevented me from being loud from a sales standpoint uh, or from just how awesome what I do is, right? I've been, you know, uh, like hesitant to sell marketing, like digital, uh, I'll beat on the street sort of vibes. Uh, And, you know, that has really, you know, I've dampened down my, my voice in so many different like areas of my life to the point where I'm like, I don't even know who I am anymore. Right. Whether it's in that space at the racket club where I'm just like trying to keep the 70 year old members, not getting upset at me being a big animal. you know. And I'm also, you know, we have kids there. We have three year olds to 86 year olds in the building pretty much every day, half the day. And I'm like, I'm just, I, 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 I love what you, you provided with for me there because it's just the same theme, right? And I, I am I haven't been listening, right? I've been, you know, trying to, you know, patch the, you know, I guess patch up the holes in the boat so much that I'm not really focusing on. Well, I mean, if we row fast enough, we're gonna get there, right? <laughs> like we gotta get going and just like lead the ship and go and move the ship, regardless of, you know, whether or not it's you know it's sinking, right? I don't know. It's awesome. Thank you so mm-hmm. much. But you got to like you when you get there too. You can't just like where you get to. You got to like you. So, yeah. if, well, sorry, Sam. I'll, <laughs> oh, not at all. I was just going to say that oh, this is this is the major theme, and and the theme. And I'll I'll add another word in here to kind of integrate with what we're talking about, which is just being a more honest. Honesty is really what honesty is efficiency, especially in this topic we're talking about. So a lot of you talked about. There's some of this that you wish you had more time. You're trying to set boundaries. You're doing all these things. 
But a lot of times, if every time you had an instinct to say something or behave a certain way, and then instead of doing it, you had to think about whether it was appropriate or think about whether it's going to play well, or you have to put a message on top of it. That's you basically having to do every action twice. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's a lot about practicing honesty when you're being honest and you're being yourself. And this is when Jonathan says, be louder, kind of channel your own personal energy into things. That's also a means to become an efficient leader because then you're not trying to clean up your own messaging before you say it every time. It's a lot of extra work. A lot of times your process, especially as a leader, will will work around you if you're honest and you're consistent. If your staff get used to you being more brusque, if your customers used to you being more loud, more animated, some of them may not like it. And that's OK, because the people that stay are going to support a process that you can sustain. Mm-hmm. I think that's a really important thing to internalize because the customer can always be right. But it, it doesn't matter how many customers you have if you can't sustain your business because it's draining you energetically and it's yeah. really bringing you down. It's making it hard for you to do your thing because in, in terms of what you're doing now, working these long hours, you have all these great ideas, you've got all the successful business stuff going on. Sustainability should be your number one priority because you can't do any of those things if you burn out and you burn to the ground. And yeah. a lot of what we're talking about right now is how do you be more honest <laughs> in your communication, in your choices, in your day to day? Because that honesty is going to free up a lot more time and space for you. Yeah. I mean, I I think, so speaking of therapy, right? This is business therapy, right? (laughs) This is therapy therapy for me, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So right in the pandemic, so January 2020, right? Two months before uh, my partner and I separated. Uh, So... We've been together for about 10 years at that point in time. And so I took on this massive business and, uh, you know, it was not an easy time for me. I took on this, this business, I had no business taken on with partners that I'd never worked with before. And it was a huge risk, like brick and mortar, you know, biggest tourism, uh, venue in, in British Columbia, like a big, big, like putting the stake in the ground. We're here. Um, and then COVID happened. So I, all three of my businesses were all based around communal gathering, break and bread, recreation groups, right? Zero overnight. Like there was no digital ax throwing stuff, right? There wasn't a, I wasn't about to do public speaking online. Um, I probably could have, if I, again, focused only on that, but I also had a venue which had no people coming to it, but needed to stay open. Um, and so I was in a very dark place and I've been dealing with like major trust issues uh, within myself, within my partners, within my, you know, the mother of my kids, like basically everyone, I was crafting something to mistrust them. Right. And, you know, I, my thought process was always to get to the start line, right. To get everything ready to get to the, to be when, we open back up. Uh, I'm going to be there and I'm going to be in good shape and I'm going to be ready for the Olympics, right? Like you got to perform on that day. And, uh, you know, it's just funny because that line was so murky, right? It was always like, well, it was like, we're half open. We're kind of open. We're closed. We're half open, you know? And, and then same thing with my relationship with the mother of my kids. It was, it was of major stress that I created, right? Because I wasn't really being honest with where I was at, right? And I wasn't really being uh, vocal about how I was feeling in those situations and, and honoring where I should be spending my time, right? It was, well, you know, from an ego standpoint, I'm like, oh, why does this business matter, right? Um, or why does this business matter? And and why does this thing that I do with my time, what does it serve? And I was just in in survival mode to the point where I've gotten, like I said, like I didn't even know where I was or where I was or who I was. Cause I just look back and I'm like, I went to a, one of the football games or as a playoff game for the league uh, this past weekend with my son, there was like, you know, 40,000 people there. I'm in the stands, I'm cheering, wearing the team. I used to hate colors right <laughs> with my son. And I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be yelling making noise right having fun with my son and you know what came of it was 
you know, more conversations in, in a direction that I want to go with a certain individual that was at the game, what have you. But, um, you know, t- to bring it all back is like I've had difficulty trusting myself and being honest with myself because of our, my fear of the success that or what's required when you're successful, right, which is to show up and be consistent each and every day uh, without falter because of the pressure and the responsibility that comes with that. And, um, you know, when you make a lot of noise uh, and quite quickly, I can get a lot of attention, right? And that's what I was kind of afraid of, was that when I get the attention, they're going to figure out that, you know, whether, you know, maybe I have like a, um, like, I feel like a little bit of a fraud, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, I'm, I, you know, when I'm talking about health and well being, and I feel like shit, right? I'm talking about routine and business stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm, in my, I'm a mess, right? <laughs> right. But I'm like, okay, keep, keep hammering, keep hammering, keep hammering, you know, and then at some point in time, I'm going to get on a podcast with some, some business therapists and it'll all work out, right? <laughs> like, really where I'm like, okay, it's got to get to the point where I got to get it to the start line. Now what? Right. Yeah. You know, you can make any narrative, uh, like, when you opened up in the show and you're talking about all the things you're working on, all the things you're doing, so much energy is coming through and it's exciting and, and uh, it's, there's a vibrancy there. And then you could describe that same period of in your life a completely different way. I'm a mess. I'm this. I'm that. All of this is just competing voices in your head or, well, actually, I would suggest that the energy you, that you describe things with, that's real. You know, that's, you feel it. Yeah. So... And the other thing that comes to my mind is um, with all the thinking, you know, analyzing, is it, is this going to lead to success? Is it going to lead to failure? Do I want success? Do I want failure? Have, has the analysis or the thinking improved your results for you? Uh, not at all. <laughs> so, my, so to Sam's point, we know that the analysis is causing energy. It takes energy. And imagine back in, you know, the CFL days, like if you thought if you spent your time thinking about well how might the, how might they line up in this you know like what what might they, might they do here like you, there's no time for that you have to do you you do and you trust yourself and when you trust yourself you're able to do so I would say again I'm, I'm being a little uh, direct I would suggest less worry about what this might lead to or what it might not to lead to or what this might do to other people etc. Um, and more just, I feel like doing this and then doing mm-hmm. because yeah, and I'll, it's not like the results you, it's not like the results by pausing is, 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 is going well. So why not try something that's more sustainable anyway, and far more likely to attract good things anyway. Sorry, Sam, you were, I just wanted to chime in there because it, it kind of plays back to what we're saying. It doesn't matter what other people think or like, or, you know, in terms of trusting yourself, you can kind of adopt the logic of, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. It just matters that you enjoy what you're doing, because even if you get the answer, the right answer, and you don't enjoy it, it doesn't matter because you're not going to be able to keep doing it. It's just going to kill you Mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. So whether you think about it like, well, how would I learn to trust myself or not? Practicing just kind of feeling what you're feeling right now, which is, am I enjoying this or am I not? And if you're not, get yourself out of it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if that works for them. It doesn't matter if if it's a mistake conventionally or for somebody's perspective that's where jonathan's saying all that thinking is just going to take up your time and it's not productive because it doesn't matter whatever business person you're going to become you're going to be able to be there in a healthy place if it's something that you want to be doing if you become a successful rich business person and eight hours out of you know 12 hours of every day is filled with stuff that you dread or you don't really do like doing or is taking your energy it doesn't matter how much success or money you have because it's just going to kill you yeah yeah Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, really, you know, we talked about all the different like fun things, right. All the different activities. And, uh, and you know, when I, when I was retiring from football and I didn't, you know, I was asked the question, what do you want to do? Like, what is your, what do you want to do? Like, what do you spend? What's your purpose? What's your, what are your, what's your passions? Like, what do you, like, what do you like? Right. And I didn't have an answer. Um, I knew that I wanted to, uh, be outside and, uh, be on the water. And I I said, I like boats. (laughs) 
<laughs> but I haven't gotten into the boat realm yet. That's kind of later down. <laughs> but um, what I did was I started this organ, this men's health organization called Wellman, and uh, we started doing things that I like to do. And we started talking about honesty and and like trying to empower men, myself, uh, to find their uh, you know, what really gets them going and gets them out of bed in a day. In, in a day. And, uh, you know, what I've done so much of is trying to provide these spaces for everyone else, uh, you know, concurrently providing and gaining access for myself. But I'm just the fucking working dog, right? And I'm just working. And so recently I've been like, I got to get more on court. I got to s- snowboard more. I got to go spend time you know go to the lake like do the things that i love to do opposed to just providing access to these things for everyone else which is my business right and uh and so like the awareness that comes with that is really now it's about stripping everything back and you know this has been super helpful about you know being honest with myself around you know uh the burnout that is imminent if it continues. Right. And I saw, you know, Devin, my partner, the mother of my kids, she, she just burnt out. Right. She was doing tech company, same amount of time, four or five years in, you know, grinding it, you know, investment, lots of, uh, you know, lots of investor conversation, doing raise, like going, you know, doing all those sorts of things and, and launching in the U S and, you know, gaining all these different users and followers and blah, 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 blah. And she just got to the point where she was just burnt out. And I'm like, I feel like I have like 10 more gears than she does, but I'm like, I've been in those gears. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I've, I've been, those have been cranking and uh, I'm ready to go. Right. Like I, I, I got a lot of endurance, but uh, I, you know, smart, not hard sort of vibes. Right. Yeah. Well, and I'll, I'll give something as a fellow empath and I'll tell you something from my journey that was really important and it might resonate with you. There's this feeling when people lean on you, and you describe this burnout, a lot of it is because you're giving and you're passionate. And it feels like to say no would be selfish. But in fact, to not say no, to not protect your own energy and to not protect your own health, that's the selfish thing. Because if you're not healthy and you're burning out, you will not be able to give or take care of the people around you. Yeah. And that's the true selfishness. Yeah. But it's very easy to get in this mindset of, oh, somebody needs me right now. And to say no is a is that feels selfish, but it's, it's not in, in the grand scheme of things, it's counterintuitive. And I just wanted to, to give you that piece from my own journey, because I think it's really important to know the best you can do for the world, for your colleagues, for your businesses is to be healthy, to be having your own fun, to give yourself space and time to think. But in order to do that, you can't work 15 hour days. You have to choose to work an eight hour day, and know what's right for you. Because if you don't have the energy to give to others, then you'll just be taking again from the world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that, uh, you know, that theme is, has obviously come up in conversations around like, you know, take care of your, you know, give yourself the the mask on the airplane when it's going down, uh, before anyone else. And, uh, I've, I've, I've used that theme in conversation with, with Devin and, uh, and, you know, just like, a few white lies here and there <laughs> around, you know, like, Oh, I'm working when really I'm like, I literally just need to go home and not be around people. Uh, yeah. and, and like, you know, going over to, yeah. And just like really, you know, taking care of my sleep and, you know, getting some, some good rest and, and just getting off my feet and, you know, I've been on my feet for 12 hours today, just, just walking, walking around the club, picking things up, moving things, getting everything ready for winter time, getting the snowball battlefield ready, you know, like, um, but, uh, you know, when I, again, when I strip it all back, it's like, if I'm not in the gym, you know, anchoring my day, then I'm, you know, I'm lost. Right. And I've, I, I, I go sporadically. I'm like, okay, I, I haven't been in a routine and it's because I'm like, well, I did like four events last week and I was on the road for six days. And then I'm like, then I came back and the kids were sick and you know, it's just like all the things. Right. But like, well, tough luck, bro. You got to figure it out anyways. You know, like that's my life. Right. So, uh, th- there's part of it where it's like, you know, you got to grind. Yes. 
but then there's got to be the, you know, that like fine line where it's like, you know, you can grind, but like I would say 25% of the time, maybe you should not. Right? Exactly. Some, yeah. Some, it's, it's about the sermon. Sometimes when we're trying to think of these big things, like what do I want or, you know, how do I change my, my life or my schedule? You know, that, that it, it doesn't always lend itself to meaningful action. So one of the things you might consider is being a little bit more thoughtful. And what do I want right now, right in this moment? So let's say you're, you know, you're at the club and one of the people that works there is complaining about saying whatever, and you're being very nice and sympathetic or whatever. But in your head, you're thinking, this person just needs a kick in the pants. That's what they really need. That's the moment to start practicing this change. That's the moment to say to the person, you know what? You need a kick in the pants. Like, it's ridiculous that you're complaining. If I, if I was in your shoes and I was complaining, I'd shoot myself. Like, so, you know, and say whatever it is that you want to say. I'm just giving that as an example. Yeah. You do that one time a day, two times a day. You do that a few times a week. That's how actual meaningful change can start occurring. But if you can't break it in that moment, it's impossible to break it like in like big picture. So maybe just start with these incremental things because at the end of the day, that's what makes up the life anyway. So mm -hmm. yeah, those decisions yeah, just saying, are huge. Just saying no. Yeah, just saying no a lot more in those in those moments where you want yeah, to say no, just say no. You know, a lot of times creating space is something that we talk about on the show a lot and just has been a really big thing in my own journey, which is you feel this need to be busy all the time, but being busy all the time, like you're discussing, it's the same sort of emotional numbing that you would if you were at the bar all the time, or if you just turn on the TV, it's just keeping you occupied so that the things that you need to address in your life and make you anxious about the business or business planning or strategy, you don't have time for it. And that's you, that's that thing you brought up when you're afraid of success, making yourself busy is, is a way to play out that fear because you don't have time to do the things that you're afraid of doing. Yeah. So like the toughest thing you can do is say no to people. And instead of then engaging with them and taking that hour to help them, you freed up an hour and use that as currency because the more you can say no, assert your boundaries, be honest and create more space for yourself. That space may feel uncomfortable for somebody who's busy all the time. It would be the same way that an alcoholic who's trying not to drink is going to be uncomfortable as they wean themselves off. But like it is in that space where you can contemplate your own feelings. You can be more creative for yourself in the business. And then innovation can take the place of, of busyness and monotony. Yeah. And when you put it like that, whew, you know, that's really where it's like, the creative drain has just been so real for me because I'm like, I, you know, I look at the thing that I need to, you know, craft, you know, the, 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 the snowball arena, which is the outdoor tennis court in the wintertime. And I just look at it and I'm like, bandwidth, max, like, and I just go do some other busy work. Right. And, uh, and so I, today is that day. Like I finally like moved all of the little pieces to the puzzle to now like, okay, now we can craft. And, uh, um, you know, so like there's, I think John, what you said was kind of along the lines of when, you know, when I, when I'm able to, to free up that space, uh, I'm able to really lean into those moments and, and, you know, do what I'm like, I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, and, uh, you know, and not feel apologetic about it. It's like, this is what I'm, you know, this is the best use of my time and where I get my most juice. And, uh, and, and I think what I've not done well enough is communicate to everyone else that that is what I'm doing. Right. Opposed to just doing it and being like, well, you better fucking figure it out, bro. Like, you know, like, you, know you guys got to be okay with me. Out here. Like, you know be clear. Yeah. Yeah. Boundary. Well, and also a lot of people who are practicing this too, you can also, let's say you block, you're able to block four hours in your office to do creative work or work on the snowball arena design. And you sit there and you do nothing. You just stare at the screen. You're blocked. You want to play flash games. You want to mess on your phone on social media. And you feel like this is a total waste of time. And I wasted my whole day. That's the work. Like I want you to feel okay doing nothing when you create the space to do those things, because it's not always going to come. 
Mm -hmm. That's why you're the, you're the leader. And a lot of people find that's the most painful thing when they feel like they could be busy all day and they block half their day or they actually make the time and they can't get the thing out that they just thought would appear suddenly. Mm -hmm. But no one writes a book by saying, I'm going to write a book or no one writes the next big you know, thing by saying, it's just going to happen right now when I demand it. Yeah. Sometimes you have to allow the space for your body to ease into that space and use it. And don't be afraid if you make the space the first time and you're like, great, everything's cleared off my plate. I'm going to knock this out today. And it doesn't come. That's the work. The work is to put yourself in that position over and over. So you have the space to breathe and process and for it to come. But if you think it's got to come the first time or otherwise it was a total waste, you're just putting that more and more on yourself. So like, it's okay that every day you take half your day and tell people, this is my time, don't come in here. And if you spend half of it messing around or just screwing around on your phone or whatever, that's part of the job. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Market research on Instagram there, you know, just trying to figure out what's cool. <laughs> All the old TikTok there. <laughs> yeah. Creativity comes in a lot of different ways, but it doesn't come on command. Yeah. For most people. But it will never come if you don't create the time and the space for it to come. So I know as you begin practicing some of these things, I just wanted to give you that also, because I know a lot of people put a lot of pressure on themselves and they're horrified that somebody would come to their office when they're supposed to be creating the next big thing and just see them dicking around, basically. And they find that like very uncomfortable. But that's the job. That's the job of a leader. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's going to be part of your creative process. Wow, that's super helpful. Thank you. Because I. A lot of the times I feel horrible when I'm like, you know, I'm going through my to my to do list and I get to that creative part of it and I just stop because I'm just like, oh, God. it's not this is not time right now. And then I got, you know, I got more into the whole, uh, you know, time blocking and making sure, you know, I'm going to like this is what I'm going to do during this time. If I need to do something creative, I will get out of the office and go work somewhere else. Headphones in dubstep, like whatever music I need to listen to to get after it and uh, and trying to craft those moments a little bit more, um, you know, uh, tactfully opposed to just being like, oh, well, I mean, I got the creative thing on the list right now. Oh, shit. I can't get it done because I'm not in that mindset. And uh, that's great perspective. So thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think that's also a good time. We've given you a lot. How are you feeling right now? You feeling a little bit better? I'm feeling good. You know, I think uh, I've really... You know, I'm, I'm, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. I feel like my, I'm like, I don't know how I just, you know, because I'm friends with Max, I got a free coaching session from you too. It's amazing. <laughs> and, uh, my, uh, my, you know, my, my res, my solutions that I'm looking for are a little bit clearer for me right now. You know, I've been thinking of them in the jumbled brain that I have, uh, because I have too many things going on. But, you know, you've definitely made it clear around, you know, honoring my boundaries and saying no and, and being content with, uh, you know, finding space for that creativity to, to reign. Um, but Jonathan, the, you know, the theme that comes up over and over and over again uh, and to the point where I'm actually have talked about writing a, uh, like a kid's book about it is uh, is making noise. Right. And uh, and, you know, that those that noise can be loud, it can be gentle, uh, but it just needs to be tactfully delivered. And, uh, you know, I think that's what comes with, uh, you know, really just uh, standing up and, and understanding what those boundaries are in the first place and, and saying, hey, like, I'm over here today, uh, but and not not feeling bad about uh, whether or not I'm gonna, we've had so many fucking noise complaints because of our neighbors because of football. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard about pickleball making noise complaint. We got pickleball, we got DJs, we have kids camps, we have a snowball arena with slingshots. Did Max tell you that I bought a catapult? That are you saying at the beginning of the show, uh, the episode? <laughs> it's legit. Like it's on a trailer. It's got a it's got a license plate, and uh, you know I think that's what this is about. Is really just like sometimes you just gotta show up with a catapult and let it fucking rip, and. Uh, and sometimes you got to show up with a, you know, a kid snowball maker and, and, you know, get on your knees and, and make the snowballs with the kids. It's a different experience. What's called, what, what's being called for in, in each moment. And, uh, I think that's really what's coming up for me. So thank you so much for the perspective here. Yeah, you're welcome. And thanks for coming on the show and sharing your, your story and your experience. So honestly, it's it great having you and learning about kind of what you're doing. 
and keep it up. I mean, it, like, like Jonathan said at the beginning of the episode, you've got so much passion and it really comes through and, and honor that because it, it's doing great things. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for that, Sam. And uh, again, congratulations on what you guys are doing here. Uh, you know, every entrepreneur always feels alone and this is great. It makes me feel a part of the community. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I look forward to, to seeing this on the, the old matrix there. <laughs> great. Well, you're welcome. And for everyone listening, thanks for tuning in again this week. If you know anyone who'd like to come on the show or if you have any comments or questions, we'd love to hear from you. But other than that, we'll sign off and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, everyone.